Greetings, uh, world. Uh, this is uh, Santos A. Perez. This is part two of my series, uh, what I hope to be a series of programming lessons for my daughter, um, where we are developing, I hope it's a we, we are developing a website called pdf2book.com, which will convert PDF files into uh, an online book, which people can read using either a standalone app or on the online on the web. Now, uh, Mamita, um, Mamita is my daughter. I sent you a message today regarding Django, D-J-A-N-G-O. It's uh, basically, as I told you, a series of programs for web development um, written in Python. It, we, we need not reinvent the wheel. Um, the Django has a series of programs which uh, already have uh, some functionality, which do certain things. And you can simply uh, call the uh, routines that are pre-programmed to do whatever you want. Um, that that's what Django is. It's not a keyword for something that it, it is inherently complex. It's simply a collection of routines written in Python for web development. Now um, I have on my on this tab here, right here on the screen, um, a program that I found which basically it's, it's a Python script or a Python program which essentially takes a um, or it creates a PDF file a very simple PDF file writes the word or the string hello world period you see it highlighted here to my left right there um, it creates a PDF file writes hello world on the PDF file and saves it as hello.pdf now, as I told you, I'm getting back into programming. It's been over 20 years since I did this. I would have been one of the best. 3.9 GPA at Rutgers, but that being said, I became a lawyer, so I have to live with that. Now, um, I, I tested the program on the command line prompt right here. Here it is. It works really well. I call Python PDF to book um, underscore one dot py, and uh, it, it runs really well. Um, and I also used Visual Studio, which is a software uh, package which is free and which you should download. I think I sent you a link. Visual Studio, it allows you to program in any programming language, C Sharp, Java, C++, C, um, probably not the old programming languages like, like Pascal or Basic, um, but most programming languages. Now, if you're looking at the screen right here, that I just pulled up. This is uh, Visual Studio. Um, this file right here is that same program that you saw here on the web. Well, all I did was take this right here that I'm highlighting right now. I cut it and pasted it into uh, Visual Studio, a new file that I called pdf to book underscore one dot py. py is the extension for Python programs. And Python programs are an, an interpreted it is an interpreted language, meaning it doesn't compile in, into standalone um, uh, executables. Um, a little bit more complex than that. I think it's more of an intermediary language, but that being said, it doesn't compile fully into a standalone app. Um, there may be programs, other programs that, that allow you to convert the intermediate Python code into a standalone executable, but that's a separate discussion. Now here it is right here. This is the entire program and what it does again it basically creates um, it basically draws the string creates a, a, a file called hello.pdf writes hello world into the file into the PDF file so that if you open up the file that the dot PDF file all you'll see is hello world. You can put anything. You can change it to hello Ashley, uh, which is your name. I keep on moving myself. Let me move myself right back. Okay. Hello Ashley. Ah, when I press the cursor keys, it moves me. Let's just erase it using backspace, Ashley. Now I'm going to save the file. And um, let's change this to, well, actually, you're not going to see the PDF file. I'll, I'll explain to you why the program works, but it's got to be invoked online. 
on the web with an HTML program. And this has to reside on the server side of the, of the HTML re request so that you have to basically access a remote server. This has to reside there. Then it creates a PDF file. I think that's how it works. Again, it's been a long, a long time, but at least the, this, this part works. Um, let me move myself back. Let's change this to Ashley. And let's change this other routine that I wrote have here, this other function. And let's just change it to Ashley again. Well, this is not a function. This is actually just a Python line of code that will actually get executed. And let's change this to Ashley. Now let me explain very briefly what all this stuff means. Um, def sum view basically creates a function which another Python program can call to uh, to basically uh, create the hello.pdf file and write on the file hello Ashley. Um, here where it says def greet name I created another function in Python, which does something very simple. It prints hello plus name. Name is the parameter that you pass to the function when you call it. And uh, then it writes a uh, good morning. Um, then below that function, I have some code which will get executed automatically. I don't have to call the, the, a separate routine or no other program has, has to call this, this um, routine separately. Um, and it's going to print hello world Ashley. Um, here where it says greet Ashley, I'm going to write in fact greet Ashley function so that you know that what I'm doing is calling the greet function that I defined right here. You see it here. I passed it as a parameter Ashley function which is a string and then it, it prints hello name whatever you you passed it in this case Ashley function then it says, it will say good morning. Let's say, instead of good morning, let's just change this to greetings. Now, I haven't figured out yet how to call the SumView uh, function, not program, it's a function, but it, it is in, in the Python program, um, so that you can create the hello.pdf file itself. I'm going to figure out how to do that. Again, I assume it's uh, that you have to have a, a, a web server um, or a website client, uh, which could be an HTML uh, a browser or a standalone app that works on, online on the web. Um, it's got to call this routine and it'll generate the hello.pdf file. And I assume, and I assume that it if once this function is called, it will return the PDF file itself, which you can save on the client side of the transaction. And the client can be, again, a web browser, uh, a program that works on the web or through the web, um, accesses the web itself. Um, so I haven't figured out how to do that. Once we figure out how to do that, we're on our way to, to writing the PDF to book.com pro program. It should be a breeze. But here, again, I defined a second function. Some view, again, is, is also a function, which I have not figured out how to, how to call. But here I defined an easy function, greet, and I explained that to you already. And then down here, I actually invoke the function with the string Ashley function. And that should work really well. Now let me, let me just save this file. And let's run the program. Very easy. Run. Run without debugging. And let's see what I got here. Oh. There it is. You see that at the bottom? Hello world Ashley. Hello Ashley function greetings. So what happened here is that the our function some view, I never called it, so it, it never printed. So you don't see the world. Um, you don't see, well you see hello world Ashley, but let, you know what, let me just change this briefly. Hello world Ashley from some view. 
Now I'm going to show you, let me save this. Now I'm going to show you that this function is never going to be called. It's not being called, so it's not going to run. Because if it does, it's going to say hello world Ashley from some view. Some view function. That's not going to work. But this right here, the separate code, print hello, uh, uh, hello world Ashley, that is going to run. That's not a function. That's just code that, that the uh, Python interpreter will run. And then here, greet, I am invoking the greet function, and it's going to say Ashley function. So let's run this again so you can see it's a little bit clearer. Again, save it. It should have auto save um, by uh, running or by default, but I don't know if it does. But here we are, okay. And uh, just as I told you, hello world Ashley. This is all that, that happened. Hello world Ashley. And then uh, hello down here where I'm highlighting. Hello Ashley function greetings. So this function here was executed and printed hello Ashley function greetings. Um, and uh, you know what, let's just write, let me make it even clearer. Greet function, save it again. Let's run it again. Now this is clearer, hello world Ashley. So we printed hello world Ashley and then hello Ashley greet function. You see it, the second line? So what I did here is I called the greet function then that greet function printed hello whatever I pass to it in this case Ashley greet function greetings and that's what printed here I can call this function as many times as I want and put different par parameters let's, let's put for example greet um, Teddy which is our beloved pet and you'll see it will run save the file run without debugging and voila you see it says now hello world Ashley again it prints it from from here this is why you see uh, the string hello world Ashley printed or, or uh, displayed then hello world Ashley great greet function greetings that's basically this invocation of the program of the function then after that we invoke the function again using Teddy as a, as a string. And I think Teddy has three Ds. That's not spelled correctly, but that's okay. But you'll see it here as well. Hello, Teddy. Greetings. That's because I called that same function twice. I have not called the function some view. I haven't figured out how to do that. Um, when I do, I think we're, we're on our way, but let me just give you an example. Some view. Some view. If I put the, the, the function and I call it, it doesn't do anything. Let's run this. One required positional argument request. Okay, so it, 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 if you come over to the function definition request, it's got a parameter called request. I don't know what that is. I need to figure this out. But let's just say that I uh, let's just call it um, uh, PDF to book. That's the parameter that I'm passing. I don't know if it's got to be a string, um, a variable. But let's try this again. PDF to book is not defined. So, okay. So I can't figure this out yet. I don't know what parameter to pass the function some view. Once we figure that out, we're on our way. Let's try again. And yeah, it doesn't work. So I can't figure out how to call this function, um, but it's got to be called at some point in time. Now, let me just try something else. You know what? I'm going to try something else. I'm going to try passing, writing this entire program, not in a function, but... Um, a separate code. Don't worry if you don't understand that. So I'm going to come down here at the end of the program. I'm going to cut and paste this entire code. Buffer seek zero. That's a function call. 
Let's see if this works. Buffer equals indentation error. Let's try this again. Ah, not working. Okay, I don't know why it's so picky about indents, but let's just take out all indents. And what I'm doing is I'm taking the code from the show view a function and just putting it outside of a function to see if it runs. If we get something. Okay, it seems that it worked. Now let me just see if I have well, I still don't do not see the um, PDF file. Now I'm going to go to my command shell prompt. I, I, I you use a Mac, but I, I recommend that you use the um, quite expensive laptop that that I that I bought you. Um, I know you use the iMac uh, routinely, but I recommend that you use the laptop which is Windows based. Uh, now let's just check here directory from the Windows shell. Here's the program itself that I just wrote. Dot .py now i'm going to run it from within the command shell which is some very simple to do you can do it i'm sure from imac it's got different shells but again i rec recommend that you use windows 10 so let's uh, compile this code or let's run it uh, python pdf to book underscore 1 That py and there it is it worked hello Ashley hello world Ashley hello Ashley greet function hello Teddy greetings hello world Ashley from some view function well it's not exactly from the function because I took the code from the function and I put it into the main body of the program but let me see if we have a PDF file okay I don't see a PDF file let me go to the documents folder maybe it's in there it is not so let's go back to the prior directory so I need to figure out a couple of things I'm just just getting back into this um, I will be a pro within two or three weeks I guarantee it okay let's put this aside now there are lots of resources online mama I, I, I sent you some links um, here's one how how to incorporate Python into HTML what basically what, what it says is that the only way to do that or the best way is using the Django DJ a and G O um, I'll teach you how to download it and install it it's not too complex um, and that has a, a number of tools one of them I basically just used in, in that function called some view which I need to figure out how to use but um, that you use the, 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 the Django and, 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 and the key is that the web server doesn't run, um, the, the browser doesn't run the Python script or the Python program. When you call a website such as Google, Google's own computers, their servers, will execute a Python script or a Python program. That Python program generates an HTML file which is passed back to the web browser and then the web browser displays it a um, little bit more complex than that but that's the gist of it um, python does not run on your the foreign or the distant computer that you're accessing through the web browser you can have your own website obviously like pdf to book.com and what we'll do we'll put python scripts or programs into the web server wordpress has a number of servers where we, we can use um, GoDaddy servers or I think we can use um, Amazon Web Services or, or um, Azure as I told you previously in one of my numerous um, text messages um, and I believe they have um, they can host Python code that you can execute from from your HTML program um, you can call it and um, we're gonna do that with pdf to book.com so 
Um, again, this is the program right here. I sent you the link. A lot of resources online. So let's get coding. Let's start a website called PDF to Book. And um, maybe we can sell the uh, domain name and the website for a few hundred thousand dollars if we become really big. We won't become billionaires with this program, but we can make some money. Okay, that's it. The end of my uh, second programming uh, lesson. Goodbye, y'all. I love you, Mama. Stop. 20 minutes.